Happy Friday, Facebook Tribe. Back again in our interview series with Dr. Roger Yanka. And I'm going to bring him on. And today we're going to go into kind of part two. Part two of uh, breath medicine. Hey, Dr. J. Kai, how's it? Good, it's great. Doing great. I look, I've been really looking forward to these and... Um, Things are things are getting exciting for the I am symposium that's coming up in October, and you know today we get to dive into to breath medicine. It's kind of our part two of breath medicine, and one thing I noticed since our first call that we went over the breath is just today we're going to get into MBA mind body alignment and you know this movement and breath together and some somewhat complex levers of how we affect our vagal ter- tone our vagus nerve. But just the simplicity of the four-part breath and the slow exhale. What a, what a cool tool that, that I've been using all week. So, yeah. Yeah, well, <clears throat> yes. So launching into the whole realm of, of the breath is, you know, in our society, nobody pays any attention to it uh, until super recently. And, and, and yet in... 1964 when I was or 1963 when I went to my first yoga class by skipping school and watching television um, the breath was right on top and um, there was a mythology at the time that <clears throat> that if you breathe into your chest that that's a that's wrong and you have to breathe into your belly which is you know it's not a bad idea but it turns out that breathing into the chest is where like the big monster magic is. And, and so, um, you know, maybe we'll talk about those uh, physiological uh, features. And, and then uh, regarding, you know, four part breath, three part, two part, five part, you know, all that stuff. People say, well, why isn't there a one part? <laughs> <clears throat> well, you can't just breathe in and never breathe out. So the one part breath has to do with the whole concept of being in association with the transcendental aspect of yourself where there is no breath. So that isn't even a one part breath. That's a, like a zero part breath. And um, we only get to do that before we're born and, and after we uh, ship, ship out of these uh, dimensions. Back to you. Yeah. And that's that's been that's one of the things I love about our conversation is you just reminding us that breath is one of the access points where when we do a series of profound breaths and we hold and we exhale, there's often these moments where I realize like I forgot who I was. I forgot where I was. I forgot that I was on a Facebook Live. I forgot that I was on a stage. I forgot that I was on a break between coaching calls. I forgot about the complexity of the world. And I think there is a, I think there is a tendency to dismiss, uh, to dismiss that phenomenon of the fact that we can literally use our breath to transcend the egoic state of mind, which is usually responsible for the torture that we go through of always wanting to be somewhere else where we're not and just to just to realize that it's just a few breaths away to get into what the the flow state expert would call transient hypofrontality where this the parts of our brain that track time self-image am i doing a good job am i worthy or not worthy that literally gets shut off and talk about anti-aging you know, talk about, uh, you know, a transcendental practice and how lucky we are that we have this thing called the breath that in for most people is an unconscious activity that's just a, a reflection of their level of stress, their level of vigilance, their level of restriction or health, but it can also be something that we take on consciously. So Dr. J, I'm, I'm going to let you, you know, lead us off here. You, you, you in some ways have foregone the needles and the herbs to devote your life to teaching about breath and, and democratizing the, the, the ability for us to heal ourselves. So I'm going to let you, you know, take us in to the breath beyond, beyond the relaxation response, bring us into the breath and, and what's going on. 
Yeah, well, uh, just a quick note is that, you know, people would say to me as a doctor of Chinese medicine, and I'm sure they say to you as well, uh, is there medicine in those needles? <clears throat> and then, you know, we as acupuncturists would respond, no, there is no medicine in these needles. And then people say, well, you know, because they've grown up in America where when you go to the doctor and you experience a needle that is really used to inject a foreign substance into your body, they think, well, then, you know, how can anything of value be happening here? And the answer is that the most profound medicine is produced within our own body, literally for free, and that acupuncture helps to organize the function of internal mechanisms that maximize our capacity to recover our natural state of well-being. So then you have to ask the question, if it's here with me, is, is, is the medicine within only with me when I'm at the acupuncturist or when I'm at the osteopath or when I'm at the naturopath or chiropractor or massage therapist? And the answer is no, the medicine within is never not there. And so then we get to ask another question, which is, well, is there something that I can do to maximize the function of the constant production of healing resources within my own being? And the answer is, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. And that's what all this hacking is about in the modern world is when we say hack, we mean hack into ancient methodologies for, uh, for being able to maximize capacity or to hack into newly, um, shall we say, unveiled or, or, or recognized metabolic pathways that have always been there, but that we, that we now know more about. Like, for instance, what comes up when we discuss things like uh, telomere sustainability and mitochondrial fitness and so forth. And one of the things that we can do, I mean, the many things are diet, exercise, rest, stress reduction, relationships, right livelihood, exposure to nature, all those things, and breath practice and Kung Fu and Tai Chi and Qigong. And so let's now look into the breath mechanism for just a moment from the Western perspective. And I'll just say this super briefly, and we can explain it on another day or later today, that when you take a deep breath, it drops the diaphragm down, you're pumping the lymphatic system. And the Chinese discovered thousands of years ago this idea that the, that the lungs rule the water in the body. And you might say, well, wait a minute. I thought the kidneys ruled the water in the body. And yes, of course, there's some truth to that. But the other truth is that the cells are producing water all the time because uh, H2O is a byproduct of metabolism. Uh, <clears throat> and that the lymphatic system is the pump that moves the water around and that when you take a deep breath drop the diaphragm down what happens is that you're you're uh, propelling the fluids in the body and the fluids are carrying the waste products away from the cells and so therefore you're maximizing the function of the elimination system etc cetera, etc cetera. so and there's more to it than that but basically the breath the uh, Belly breath uh, accelerates the lymphatic system, which carries the immune cells and discharges metabolic waste. The, the, the uh, chest breath uh, triggers two mechanisms, one in the lungs associated with the stretch receptors, one in, uh, one in the, uh, in the uh, vascular system that's associated with pressure called baro, baro receptors barrow being like barometer pressure. So when you raise the pressure in the rib cage, it press, pressure rises these mechanisms called barrow receptors. And both the stretch receptors in the lungs and the barrow receptors in the heart 
or vascular system trigger through a mechanism that goes through the spine and into the brain and the release of uh, acetylcholine, choline being the base molecule for all of the healing, self-recovering uh, um, neurotransmitters, including oxytocin, uh, oxytocin being the, I feel secure, I feel I'm in a circumstance that I trust is safe for me, which then allows for deeper relaxation, which then allows for the production of, of all, or, or the, uh, shall we say, the increase of all the internal mechanisms uh, uh, for uh, health recovery and health sustainability. So then that's the Western world. So what happens with the chi? And one of my favorite phrases from all of the great uh, texts from the Chinese point of view about the power of the breath is this one little phrase, and, and it shows up in many texts, and the phrase is, the breath is the handle. The breath is the handle. Well, the handle of what? And who cares? Like, what is a handle anyway? So here's a cup, and it has a handle on it. I'm doing a lot of building lately, and I have a hammer, but I couldn't use that hammer to get any progress whatsoever if it didn't have a handle on it to increase the capacity of its uh, power to drive a nail. Uh, a door has a handle on it because if a door doesn't have a handle, then it's not a door. It's a wall, something that you can't get through. The point is that the handle makes things work. So when we say the breath is the handle, it means that the breath is the underlying motor or engine for the power of maximizing chi or maximizing function. And uh, earlier you said, Kai, that when you do a certain type of breath practice, you actually lose touch with your uh, conscious mind the part of your uh, consciousness that is associated with a self-assessment and assessment of the world, and we'll just call it that because there's a lot more we could say about how we perceive ourselves and how we navigate and judgment and forgiveness and all that stuff. Uh, but when we forget about our self for even a few moments, what happens is that we go into that kind of transcendental timelessness where we are directly associated with the aspect of ourself, which is inherently free, no matter where we are. And you ask the question, why do certain types of people uh, not care about going to jail? Or, or how is it that people who were put into prison in uh, during the communist uh, regime in China how did they survive that? And the answer was that they had a sense of the fact that no matter where they are, they are safe. And even as we die and leave ourselves, the body of ourself and, and even the personality of ourself behind, there's an aspect of ourself that recognizes that we are invincible in some way that's difficult to describe. So, wow, I mean, that's all about the breath. That's amazing. Was that what you were looking for, Kai? Or are you actually looking yeah, no. for, let's do something? No, we're going to do something for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so much of what I got interested in during the pandemic through my clients and what I was seeing in the cross section of, of my, uh, my peer group was just recognizing that trauma is innate in the human experience. Birth is a trauma. And what I hear you saying, Dr. Yonka, is, is that this whole idea of meditation and spirituality and regulating our breath is a pathway to cultivate within ourselves what I would like to point out is the opposite of trauma. The traumatized self is self-protective. It's, it's concerned. It's vigilant. And what a, what a blessing or what, a, what almost a necessity it is to become skillful 
to dissociate from the complex traumatized self and to start to get to know the version of us that is beyond all that so that we can bring those qualities of being into our businesses, into our relationships, and we're not searching around to get them from other people, from substances, from experiences that we know we can turn inward and access our divinity. And I, and I think that's beautiful. And we should probably just head in that direction. Um, <laughs> I would like to take us through one round of the breath work that I teach most often, which is called MBA. And then Dr. J, if you could, when we finish the MBA, if you want to take over and lead and guide us into some, you know, uh, an opportunity to really touch that part of us that is non-dual, that is not conditioned, that is not habituated. Uh, maybe you can take over uh, at, after the MBA. Would that be okay? Yeah. So it sounds like you're going to present the practice and then I will, uh, shall we say, um, make some declarations to support people in uh, sustaining a connection with that state or dynamic yeah that would be beautiful and you're welcome to uh experience the mba in your body and then as i as i bring us into the silence um, you're welcome to guide us through any practice you feel that would be complimentary as you take us into our unhabituated selves and you know just anybody listening if you can pull the car over if you can shut down the other tabs if you can put on your headphones uh this is one of Dr. Yonka's specialties is that he, d he really does maintain his connection to his non-physical self. And so when he guides a group of us there, not only are the techniques really effective, but because part of him, part of his energy and his where he sits with his you know, heart brain coherence is already there, it's almost like you can you can borrow this frequency to get there a little easier uh, than you might be able to do it alone. And for that, for all the work you've done, Dr. Yonka, to be that person, thank you for that, because I certainly appreciate it. Well, and I must say that uh, it's a discipline to be able to do that. And it's always a little easier when there are other people uh, around who are doing it too. Uh, and yet the ultimate is to be able to find a way to bring that to our moment-to-moment -moment self, which is, wow, that's a big deal and not always that easy and very worthy of cultivation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it's the... It's 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 cool to do breath work. It's cool to meditate. It's cool to form a relationship with your transcendental self. So let's get into that. Let's get into it. All right. The first part, um, there's a movement and we're going to go from a, a prayer position with hands open. Base of the thumbs are on the sternum. And the movement is from a seated position. Your, your hands are going to come up about an inch and a half off your body. And at the center of the eyebrows, they're gonna come open. And you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together, lift your chin and your chest. And this is like the energy of a yawn in the morning. If you got out of bed and you were very carefree and you might, you know, the first thing you might just do is like, ah. So it has the energy of a sigh of relief of a morning stretch. The second part is just exactly the opposite. Almost like if you remember doing a cannonball into the pool, you're going to come <laughs> forward, make these fists forward and down, and you're going to curl up into a cannonball. So this is the open, and this is the close. Chin to chest, squeezing the fists, pressing the inside line of the arms together. Elbows are gently going into the diaphragm just below the rib cage. So let's just do a couple of these. So we'll start with the prayer position. No particular breath. And just open up. Hands come up the center line. Opening, stretching, squeezing. And then going the opposite way. Curling up into that cannonball in your chair. Open. Close. Opening, stretching, closing, squeezing. Okay. 
So right there, we've got a technique from classic Qigong called spinal cord breathing, where we are flexing and extending the spine right around those vital organs of the heart and lungs. It's mainly from the rib cage up to the base of the neck. And we're increasing the nerve conduction. We're increasing some of the stimulation of all those organs that hang like branches from the tree of the spine, the trunk of the spine. And the opening, this opening and relaxing is like uh, a signal to our nervous system to go into rest and digest, to activate our, our parasympathetic tone. The closing and bracing for impact is a fight or flight response, but we don't want to demonize fight or flight. We want to realize that we need cortisol. We need those stress hormones to be healthy, to be strong, to be able to protect and to take action and to make transformation happen. But we also want to be able to blend into that the relaxation, the rest and digest. So now we're going to bring the breath in. So on the inhale, uh, we're going to do the opening through the nose. So it'll be simply... And then when we close into that cannonball, we're going to exhale through the mouth. So let's just do five of these together and then hold the last one. Here we go. Starting in the prayer position, you can just kind of tune in to your level of energy right now, your level of clarity, your level of presence, how much peace versus agitation. So you can notice the change just from the breath and the movement, which is about two-thirds of the technique. So, All right, ready? Let's take a deep breath in and stay here in this position. Inhale through the nose and hold the breath. And then let's blow all that air out through the mouth and relax every muscle in the body. Just any unnecessary tension, drop it out. And now we're going to breathe in and open the arms. Inhale, nose. Exhale, mouth. (sighs) Lift and open. Inhale, nose. Close and squeeze. Exhale, mouth. (sighs) Now find your rhythm. Let's do five breaths. One. (sighs) Two. (sighs) Three. (sighs) Slowing it down. Four. (sighs) Five. Inhale, hold. Both hands flat on the heart. And now exhale through a tiny opening in the lips like you're blowing out a thread of air. And then come back to a natural breath. Bring your hands palm over palm over the belly. Take a couple belly breaths. And if you're with us live or on the replay, feel free to chime in. What what did you notice just from... That first two-thirds of this method, just from the breath and the movement, what did you notice on the hold, on the exhale? All right. So if you got a little lightheaded during that, then you can breathe a little quieter and a little slower. But there's one more technique. So we've we've got the combination where our breath pattern and our movement pattern are simultaneously stimulating both branches of our nervous system. So we're we're already getting a balancing or harmonizing effect through our vagus nerve on our nervous system's ability to naturally move between getting stuff done and resting and recovering. And maybe most importantly, that we can blend those attributes together in the perfect recipe so we show up exactly how we want to show up in any given moment. So the last part, is when we take that big breath, inhale, let's say this is the the 12th breath or the fifth breath and we say hold, we're gonna sit tall and we're gonna retain that breath for anywhere from five to 15 seconds. Hands flat on the center of the chest. And then I'll say blow all that air out and relax and you'll exhale out the mouth. (sighs) Chin to chest, soften, sublimation, sublime. No tension, no breath. And by the way, Our ability to hold a breath and retain it, as well as to hold with no air, those are really powerful ways to improve uh, a a number of our physiological functions. The longer we can hold our breath comfortably and the longer we can hold with no breath 
comfortably are generally speaking signs of an adapted nervous system. So here we are in our exhalation, our sublimation. There'll be a, another moment when you hear that voice to breathe in and you'll take a powerful inhale as you straighten your spine. You're filling the belly and the chest. You'll take a couple sips through the mouth. That tops it off to really give those barrow and stretch receptors an extra level of boost. And then you swallow your saliva, relax your shoulders, activate parasympathetic, and you're going to exhale through that tiny pinhole as you slowly bring the abdominal wall back toward the spine. Okay. That is a repetition just for your mind. Now, as I guide us through this, you can just tune in and we'll guide you every step of the way. So let's begin again. Here we go. Hands come together. Base of the thumbs touch the center of the chest. Bowing the head, which allows us to access our heart intelligence. You may, you may touch the tongue to the roof of the mouth to connect the heart to the brain. And I would invite each of you listening to pick a reason to breathe. Any conscious breathing creates what is called activation energy. And that's energy in our nervous system to behave, to feel, to think outside of our habituated self. So it's, it's, it's energy that get, brings us into freedom, into new patterns. So once you've got your reason to breathe, just solidify that intention, that connection. Step two, take a deep breath in and hold and stay in this posture. Step three, blow all the air out. Relax every muscle in your body and pause with no air. And four, begin, breathe in, open arms. Inhale, nose. Exhale, mouth, close and squeeze. Find your rhythm. All the way in. All the way out. Crank it up for five breaths. Breathing a little louder and a little stronger. Now, slowing it down, taking out any unnecessary tension. Five, four, slower, three, two, one. Inhale, hold, straight spine, hands on heart. Sit up tall, feet solid on the ground. Then blow all that air out, relax, chin to chest, empty it out. Pausing in the no air. And then when you're ready, breathe in, straighten your spine and hold the breath. Sip through the mouth, top it off. Swallow saliva, relax shoulders, round the belly. Open the lips, exhale through a tiny pinhole. Like air leaking from a tire, slowly bringing the navel toward the spine. And then just come back to that breath right in the center of the chest, the heart focus breath, slowing down your respiration rate. And it's often right here as you focus on the heart and you slow your breath rate that you're able to access new thoughts, new emotions, new perspectives. Perspectives that if you were to embody and take action on them would likely eliminate some of the unfavorable circumstances of your life. Take a deep breath in and hold in the chest whenever you're ready through the nose. And as you exhale again through that pinhole, practicing that exhale, slide the hands down until you're palm over palm below the navel. Continue to bring the navel toward the spine. And then find that grounded breath. We, we used to see being grounded as a, an esoteric, energetic quality that certain people had. And now we know that it's, a, it's, it's simply a function of slow, deep abdominal breaths where we pause between the inhale and the exhale. And where we linger at the bottom of the exhale before we breathe in again. 
and simultaneously we feel the ground below us, that is the solidity and stability of the ground. And when we do that, our body has this ability to pull in the Earth's frequency, the Schumann frequency, to ground us, to, to make us less reactionary, less triggerable. All right, just for the sake of generosity and of repetition, which breeds mastery, we're going to do the technique one more time. If you didn't feel much, you can breathe a little louder, a little stronger. If you got, if it felt really intense, you can kind of dial it back a little bit. Here we go. Hands in this intention setting position. Base of thumbs touch the center of the chest. Head is bowed, accessing the heart. Tongue touches roof of mouth. And really take a moment to find a reason to breathe. Step two, breathe in and hold the breath, staying in this posture. Step three, blow it out and let go of any excess tension through the mouth. Four, begin, breathe in and open. Exhale, mouth, close and squeeze. Find your rhythm. Now slow it down, five. (sighs) Any unnecessary tension comes out, four. (sighs) Three. (sighs) Two. (sighs) One. Final breath, inhale, hold. Both hands flat against the chest. Blow all that air out, surrender, tuck your chin, relax. Final breath, pulling everything in and up the central channel like sipping fluid through a straw. Pull it all the way up from the perineum to the crown. Stand tall, sit tall, sip through the mouth. Swallow saliva, relax shoulders, hold, activating those barrow and stretch receptors and then open the lips and exhale a tiny pinhole. Slowly bringing the navel back toward the spine. Feeling the heart and brain coming online in a new way. And when there's no air left to exhale, come back to that heart breath and just take a moment and listen, feel, come back to an up-leveled version of yourself. Good. We're going to slowly take one more deep breath in through the nose, filling the chest. Swallow it down, relax shoulders, open the lips, exhale through that pinhole and slide the hands down. Tell your palm over palm below the navel, continue to breathe out slowly until the navel's all the way to the spine. And then come to that belly breath, grounded breath. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. J. So mostly, nothing to say for now. Turn your attention inward and feel, body feel, and emotional feel. Continue to let the breath be deeper. than usual, purposeful, slow. See if you can hold on to presence, presence, has no content except for where you are 
and what you're experiencing without reflection on the past or anticipation of the future or even questioning what's happening. See if you can let it be pure experience. And to support you in sustaining this effect or this dynamic, shall we say, allow me to ring this gong. Um, maybe it will sound right and maybe it won't. Kai, if this doesn't sound right, then you just put a thumb down and I won't do it again. So let's use this gong for three times, one time for the physical world and our body in it, the second time for the conscious world and our consciousness in it, if possible, absent past and future reflection and the third gong for our transcendental self and our awareness of our eternal nature. heart and mind. And trans dimensional awareness. And before we return to dimensional conversations wherein we discuss these things and try to make sense of them, take a couple of more really slow, long, slow, deep breaths. And as you're exhaling on these, think to yourself, how fortunate I am to be somewhere safe, to experience these practices, which are obviously accessible and inexpensive and quite profound. And in this awareness, it feels right to allow our sense of security to expand in a sort of quantum or trans space-time sense to to give those who are troubled some kind of a sense maybe just simply a sense of the fact that there's someone or some people somewhere who care 
and are flooding the field with love. Back to you, Kai. We all carry the temple within ourselves and in every moment of our lives, we're either a contribution to the electromagnetic energy that's in a room, in a, in a family system, in a relationship, or we are a, we are a, a disharmonizer, a drain on that same energy. And we spend so much time learning information, entertainment, these things that keep the mind busy, but don't really provide a sustainable sense of peace or an ability to nourish the self from the inside out. And I just encourage those of you today that tuned into this to let it be a reminder that building our sanctuary within ourselves is, is one of the best investments of time and energy that we could ever make. When we, when we punctuate our lives with this kind of stillness. It really allows us to course correct much more quickly. And we don't lose the hours or the days or the weeks or the time sick because we're really listening to what our body needs and what our, our heart is trying to tell us. Our heart that we now know is pre cognitive pre-cortical it's it's the heart that is picking up energy from the field from the quantum field and translating it so well thank you so much dr j and yep thank you kai and as we wrap today you know uh we are dr yonk and i are so excited about uh the two of us creating a journey for people October 2nd through 6th in Olympia, Washington, where even if you don't need CEUs or you're not a massage therapist, but you just want to come and you want to learn how to move your body in ways that makes it feel better and allows it to conduct more energy. If you want to learn a whole toolbox of breath medicine, we're going to be teaching that and we're going to create a pathway through those three or four days where you can really come out nourished and rejuvenated. Um, not to mention the, the breath work and cacao ceremony, which will be s super transformative in our ability to, to experience worthiness and the non dual state uh, with music and breath and the medicine of cacao that helps to dilate the heart and really open us up and um, to, to gather with like minded individuals. It's going to be an epic event uh, where you train, you celebrate. Uh, you heal, you rejuvenate. So, Dr. J, anything you want to say about what you're going to be teaching uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, at the I Am Symposium? Yeah, uh, well, breath medicine is, uh, we, we were uh, doing some of the archetypal breath practices today that are basically from all the cultures in the world you know, woven together in particular ways. Uh, we were using the four part. Actually, uh, we were two, we were doing three part breathing today. Um, <clears throat> and there, there's a whole bunch on that. And then um, there's this amazing bodywork technique. And I'm not sure where I'm going to be plugging this in to the uh, program because it's sort of like still being developed uh 
right? We're, we're laying track as we're driving the train. And, um, but this bodywork technique is not something that you need to be a body therapist to learn. It is based on a profound uh, one-liner from Chinese medicine, uh, which is, I, I, I think, you know, among the great one-liners of uh, all the great uh, original indigenous systems of medicine and healing, which is, if the blood is there, the chi is there. You can also say, if the chi is there, the blood is there. So if you think about your liver, uh, <clears throat> if, if my liver is, is, is processing blood efficiently, then the chi is ample. Or we could say, if the chi of the liver is ample, then my blood will be processing efficiently in the liver. So they're kind of like a, a brother and a sister. Well, they're definitively like a brother and a sister, the chi and the blood. And there's this method that I invented years ago when I was in my clinical practice called pulse radiance method. And how that works is that you basically just hold people's limbs while they're lying in a very comfortable position. And there's a one super simple thing that we do while we're doing that, along with breathing and relaxing, adjusting our posture and connecting the grand Tai Chi channel between heaven and earth. And, you know, it's all, it's very easy to learn and practice. And um, so, yeah, so somewhere in that program, Pulse Radiance Method will be showing up and then we'll be doing, I don't know, Let's do some Kung Fu, uh, you know, training, like Kung Fu fun. Yeah, yeah we, you know, uh, again, this is, uh, this is what we're intending to do. But both Dr. J and I love to work the spectrum from self-massage, tapping, joint mobility, stretching, into deeper stretching and stances, into some kind of kick-ass, more, more, challenging maybe even break a little bit of a sweat and then back out into the qigong to clear the cortisol and i'll be sharing a routine at this event called spiritual spartan which which really is a, is one of the most enlightened ways to exercise from the proper way to stretch and open the body so the issues and the tissues get get uh um, recruited and open into high intensity interval training where you can go as as challenge yourself as your body allows to create that hormesis, um, that that quick twitch muscle fiber, and then end up clearing all of that out with qigong and breath work, and then coming back to your vision. And all of that will happen in 90 minutes. It's it's a profound practice. And Dr. J has his version of that, which I'll get to just be a student in the front row or the back row somewhere, and I'll be sweating and twisting and breathing with all of you. So it's going to be a blast. So. It's going to All be right, a well, doc, bring your Please bring your gong with you, if you would, your bowl. Always That would be do. awesome. Yeah. So, all right. And, and by the way, if you are thinking of coming and you want to kind of create your own reality, you know, uh, Dr. Yonka's Pulsed Radiance Method will be a time where you can get to lay on a table and receive. Um, there's also a Thai massage class that's going to be open to everyone. There's an there's a incredible practitioner Ola who's going to be sharing some of the uh, health rites of passage from the shamanic tradition of the Central and South American cultures. A uh, really beautiful set of initiations that we're going to be able to tap into. So this is going to be <laughs> Oh boo ta, you just froze. Hey, okay, I'm back. So thank you so much. Um, Tiffany, there, there, if you go to ATA Massages, there is an all-access pass to all the, all the classes. So, yeah. Love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Please, uh, wherever you're watching this, on YouTube, on one of the IIQTC pages, ask questions. You know, we're going to be going live right up until the event every Friday to give you guys a taste of what's going on and also just to be a contribution to the community and have an excuse to – come together on Fridays and cultivate ourselves. So thanks again, Dr. J. Thank you, everybody. Well, everybody, take care.